Welcome everybody to another VITA webinar. We are gathered today to understand a little bit more about uh, denture teeth, VITA denture teeth. Uh, I'm Jim McGuire. I'll be uh, going over everything here. Uh, we've been doing these VITA learning webinars for some quite some time now. Um, so uh, they have been very instructive, very uh, useful to get the you know, just edu peer education out uh, very quickly to everybody. I hope that uh, everyone is doing well and uh, is safe from the COVID. Uh, looks like things are getting better, which is good because eventually we will all see each other in person, get back to normal in our market, which would be exceptional. Now, today's webinar, uh, it is the uh, denture teeth, uh, Vita denture teeth, economy to first class, both requiring uh, premium performance. So what this means is that I'm going to go over the Vita denture teeth and kind of show you how they position themselves within the market and what they can do for you and how they can help you and your productivity, as well as uh, some hints, trips uh, about taking shade. Uh, also using denture teeth um, a little bit like crown or bridge where we have to look at the denture teeth more like uh, the indications. Um, so today's webinar, uh, what we're going to do is uh, have your phones on mute. There is on the right-hand side of your uh, desktop, there should be a panel from a GoToWebinar panel. And within that panel, there is a question box, as you can see there. So if you want to type in your questions, uh, please do that. And then we will either, I'll kind of monitor them. And if there's some that I can answer right away, I will. Otherwise, at the end of the program, we'll have a, um, a basic Q&A session so that we can pick up any unanswered uh, questions and so forth. Uh, you can learn us more, uh, more about our Vita premium lines, the denture teeth, the economy teeth, as well as any other Vita product uh, from our site on, on site on uh, uh, social media, as well as, um, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube. We have a lot of videos, a lot of webinars that we've recorded and placed on the website. This webinar will also be recorded, and then it will be posted. Uh, and once it, it gives us a couple days, and then we'll post it, and then you can revisit it if you want. Anybody who's looking for CE, we're doing CE um, as long as you respond back to a um, an email from the education department that will ask you a, a few questions and so forth. And then if you can get back to us on that information, fill out that form, we can get you, provide you with CE. If you're NBC, a technician, we will uh, send that out directly to the NBC uh, crediting uh, office uh, to provide those uh, CE hours for you. Uh, again, the Vita Social, uh, the the website, whether uh, Vita North America, uh, the videos and additional information can be find out, found on that. As I mentioned, there's a lot of information on YouTube, Vita North America. We've, we're sourcing, doing two or three videos every month, uh, posting them. They're very short videos on various products and so forth, so please visit us. And then LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, of course. So uh, let's get on with the program here. Uh, so we are going to talk about the Vita Denture Teeth. And again, I'm Jim McGuire. And we're going to talk about the uh, the teeth and how they perform, how they're different from maybe other teeth. Vita has several denture teeth available. And as we get into this, I'm going to kind of talk to you about how um, to determine which denture tooth to actually use. I think we, I'm gonna relate this basically to crown bridge. For removals, we are so used to just getting a shade and then just getting a mold. But the, you know, for me, there's a lot more to that. It, it, it's the indication, just like crown bridge, where uh, if, it's, if you're milling, if you happen to know anybody who mills uh, materials, we kind of pick and choose the materials on the basis of opacity and translucency and then texture as well. And those things can also become critical, especially today with modern um, dental um, dentures, 
that we want to make the patient a little bit more youthful. And, and it's going to fall in different criteria. So we have premium aesthetics. Um, you know, we have the Physiodins, we have the um, Vita Plan a Plus, and then we have Vita Pan Excel. All of those within that frame are a little bit different. And again, you would select it maybe on the, the texture that you, you would prefer or the patient would prefer. And I think a lot of this is just getting your, your dentist and or if you're a denturist, getting used to doing a little bit more of what we do in Crown and Bridge and move that over into the, the denture tooth realm as well. Then we've got Vita Pan. Uh, those are the older teeth. Those are more what we call aged teeth. Um, so if you're looking for a, a, um, a tooth that is shows its age as a denture, the Vita Pan is one of our most popular uh, brands of uh, Vita teeth. Those are a little bit more flat. They're a little bit more polished and so forth. So they're a little bit more opaque. So they will reflect more. So they look more, a little bit more of an aged denture look. And then, of course, we're really getting into the digital dentures as well. We have what's called the Bionic uh, DD frame. Uh, I'll go over and then also the, uh, the Vigo as well. So today's, today's world is looking at teeth, how do they show? Do they look like denture teeth or do they look like natural dentition? Vita's philosophy has always been, we wanna make teeth that look like natural dentition. They look like teeth. So we borrow a lot from the Crown and Bridge. We, Vita, of course, makes a lot of porcelain and other products, but their main product line has always been since the 1920s, denture teeth. And they're the ones that created the vacuum fire porcelain. So they're the ones that have fooled around with um, with translucencies, opacities, something that looks vital like a, like a natural tooth. And we look at it shape, shade, the light. How does the light uh, react? How does it interact with those uh, various denture tooth materials? So, and then the last one is also the wear resistance, right? You, Basically, the difference between a premium tooth and uh, maybe an economy tooth may be the wear factor, right? Economy teeth are usually not built for long-term fixed denture work on implants because they can't support the loads. But the premium teeth, of course, can. So we look at denture teeth and we say, hey, how can we improve on them? Well, to improve on them, we have to again go back to the natural tooth. So we look at the natural teeth, we look at the contours, we look at uh, previous sets of denture teeth, what's out there. And we look at areas such as this, like in between the denture teeth where you have your acrylic. Do you wanna see a lot of acrylic? Do you not? We have developed the teeth, the forms of the teeth so that they remove a lot of that gummy look, if you will. So we've contoured the, the natural, um, look of a natural tooth and we built that into our teeth. So we have a uh, new design, if you will. We look at the gingiva, we look at the contours, we look at that golden triangle, if you will, the proportions, we try to make sure that the dynamics of the teeth are as natural looking as possible. So we broaden those teeth out, we realign the angles, and just so everybody knows, when we look at Vita teeth, they are very asymmetrical. So the two centrals on, on the same card are not gonna look identical. They're not proportionally identical. They're not twins. Um, they are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're different because natural teeth are different. They don't follow unless you've carved them out or you've developed porcelain teeth, laminate veneers, where uh, patients feel like they need to have uh, basically chiclets, very straight incisal edges, things like that. But when it comes to dentures and natural teeth, we want to, we have the ability to realign them, to, to twist them, to create different smiles from the same denture tooth, but make it look different every time we do a setup. So we take those proportions, we broaden them out, you know, 
are they good proportions? Have we broadened out the the contact area? We've kind of elongated the um, the contact areas, make it more natural. They're not pinpoint. They're a little bit more uh, have a facet, uh, a negative and a, and a positive uh, link to them, a, a facet that they kind of line up. And when you set them, they line up perfectly. Uh, they kind of self-align, which I'll show you a movie later on to see that. But so we've developed these uh, to try to mimic natural teeth, develop them so that they have the right lengths, the right widths. Um, and, and again, they have the right incised lay edge. We've included mamelon material. We've included some opalescence and so forth. So the shape is very important to us. We've created those on most of our anterior denture teeth. Uh, to make them look more like a, a natural tooth. Uh, we have did the curvatures, right? We we have did the uh, everything to make it look like a natural tooth so that the patient, when you uh, deliver your denture, if you're using beta denture teeth, the patient's going to say, wow, those feel like natural teeth. I can't tell that they're um, denture teeth. You know, they don't feel plastic. In which our premium teeth, they're really not 100% PMMA. They actually have some uh, composition, some silica to increase the strength as well. So we've developed these teeth. Uh, we've added the texture. And again, I'll go over the texture because that sometimes counts depending on what the patient's expectations are. I think we just have, again, we have to start talking to our dentist and say, hey, you know, I'd like you to start looking at your denture teeth, not cookie cutter, but discuss with your patient, hey, how can we make you, um, Mrs. Smith, look much better, give you a better smile, whether it's a shade, whether it's texture, whether it's youthful look, or whether or not they are the appropriate patient to have a replacement denture that looks like an aged denture. And some patients are like that. Some patients don't care that they look a little bit um, elderly, that they are not bothered by others knowing that they have a denture. But as uh, things continue in this industry, the way the patients are, the way cosmetics are going, we see it on TV all the time. Uh, everyone's looking for uh, natural, brighter, younger looking teeth. So Vita has also developed a digital denture uh, tooth. So we went back to the drawing board and we actually redesigned the teeth specifically for digital um, milling and printing and how those teeth, how the contours of those teeth can fit into the context of those software, design software programs. So you can kind of see here that we, we've Got a variance here that you can see the full contour of this tooth, the clinical tooth, uh, denture tooth portion. But within the software, there's actually a um, uh, an area, a gray area there that will accept the necks of those teeth to create those sockets or pockets, however you want to call them, whether it's printed or milled, so that they're received and they have a positive fit within that denture frame. Again, whether it's milled and or uh, printed. We've also developed the contours to make it look and feel like a natural tooth. So it's a very nice tooth. Um, they come in uh, either bubble packs or they come on the Vigo or they come in a frame, which I'll show you in a, in a second. Uh, the, they're bonded uh, into the acrylic printed or the um, uh, milled denture uh, base. And then we use a specialized uh, adhesive called Vionic Bond. It's a really nice adhesive in which that is, uh, it's almost like water. And these Vigo teeth that come in this pre-packaged, they're already sterile. So when you unpeel them out, you pick them up, use a, use a set of gloves, and you use this Vionic Bond, you apl apply it to the socket and the basal portion of the tooth, and then you place it in, and then all you have to do is let it sit overnight or in a, um, a pressure pot for 20 minutes, and it'll cure right away. That's, that's it. 
and we've pre-abraded, pre-blasted, sandblasted the basal portion of each one of these individual teeth. So you don't have to treat anything. The design software does everything, and then it develops whether printed or milled again, and then these teeth are then positioned into their sockets and then adhesively bonded. And of course, Vita is always concerned about making sure that they have a product that is long lasting, that is gonna be successful. Uh, so we've done a, a aggressive and, and um, a substantial amount of testing to show that the failure, the bond failure is going to be a, um, a cohesive failure if it fails, not an adhesive failure. In other words, the weak link, of course, is not the adhesive, but the actual acrylic material between the tooth and the denture base, whether printed or milled, that's where it'll fracture. So these are very sturdy, uh, long-term permanent denture teeth that can be used in either a, a three-shape and or a ExoCAD software, design software, denture uh, software. On the um, alternative, there is a um, uh, Ceramil AG Almond Gerbach. It has a milling unit that can also mill denture teeth. And we actually use the Excel um, materials to produce these uh, denture teeth. They're embedded in a, in a wax. And then the machine will come through and it'll mill only the basal area, not the anatomy, the occlusal or the incisal third, but from the underneath the basal side, it will mill those and shorten them to, so that they fit within that, um, that denture base. Uh, so these are like carded teeth. They're manufactured at the plant. We just embed them. Uh, this Almond Gerbach, they've just recently also released a design software for a single arch. So now there is, uh, if you have a specific case that is against, say, natural teeth, you can do a single arch denture, mill it out, or print it, um, and it will actually mill these carded teeth that are in these uh, pink wax here that you see the frames. It'll mill not just the basal, but now it will spot mill the occlusal or in the incisal if there is a interference issue with the opposing natural dentition or whatever might be opposing. It's a really nice uh, addition that Almond Gerbach has done uh, to provide you with the means to create nice denture teeth, again, whether printed and or milled. Again, those are the Vigo teeth. Uh, a economy tooth, right? Well, Vita doesn't make just inexpensive, and I want to, you know, Stay away from the word cheap, but they don't. Vita doesn't make cheap teeth. Vita puts all the effort into a natural tooth uh, designed for all of their tooth lines, and this includes their economy tooth. The economy tooth is called an MFT, a multifunctional tooth. It kind of mimics the uh, Excel, if you will, and the lingual form posteriors. The only exception between this material and the premium tooth line is that this is a pure PMMA material tooth line, but yet we add all the dynamics, light dynamics, and everything else, fluorescence, into this tooth. So what makes a premium economy denture tooth? Well, for us, again, it's the same qualities as our premium tooth. We develop the shape, the shade, the light, the only difference is the material, and the material is a since it's a pure PMMA, we've designed it with um, uh, you know highly cross-linked uh, polymers, and this is uh, helps increase the the wear resistance uh, for long-term uh, use. So I would advise not necessarily to use this tooth for an implant case unless it's going to be an interim. Um, like an all-on-four short-term denture uh, base. Uh, this could work so that they can help establish a new centric, uh, new occlusal table, occlusal scheme, scheme, work with that patient, work with that dentist to try to decide really long-term what the function of that denture tooth uh, or denture, uh, whether it's fixed or removable, should be over an implant. 
So it's the same material, it's manufactured, all of our teeth are manufactured. Uh, essentially today, they are manufactured through a process of machine. Some denture teeth, some of the denture tooth lines are still manually layered and they are produced in these little uh, frames, in these little molds. So each mold is actually um, designed independently, if you will. So we have five or six, let's take a mold like a, a T46, for instance. T46 is one of our molds. Uh, we may have five or six uh, denture tooth processing molds that we actually create the teeth in. Those five or six denture molds, these silver um, pucks right here, they are slightly different from each other. That's why you'll see that a T46 from one card to another card may slightly look different. Uh, this is the fact that the, um, uh, these molds are a little bit different. And again, Vita's um, philosophy of just having uh, a natural tooth so that things are asymmetrical, they're not the same all the time, uh, gives the ability for you to adjust these, uh, place them, set the teeth up so they're uh, very creatively, um, uh, ar the arrangement is such very natural. So all of our teeth are produced using a three-layer pr uh, process as well. Uh, each one has its own unique processing manufacturing material. So if you take the MFT, those are densely cross-linked acrylic PMMA, uh, the Excel, the Physidens, the VitaPan Plus, the VitaPan, the Bionic uh, uh, DD frame as well. Those are MRP, the, what we call microfilla reinforced polymer that has about a 14% uh, silica uh, base to it, along with the PMMA that adds the uh, increased strength. And then of course, I have Bionic Vigo, which are specific for um, digital denture fabrication. That's a reinforced uh, silica endowed polymer material uh, to give it increased wear and the dynamics with that silica material. But all of our teeth are, of course, judged also on the long term stability MFT, VitaPan, Lingoform, Physiodens, Excel. Those have great wear resistance. And we have pretty, uh, a large number of um, um, scientific documentation that we can provide you. And as we get closer to the end of this uh, webinar, we can show you uh, to get a hold of your um, your local sales rep or get a hold of us here at the help desk, Paul and myself. So they're made out of the unique materials, only Vita controls. Um, has for a long time, the way they construct these denture teeth, they are homogenous, uh, they're one material. They ha may have different values, but they're one material. So as they create them, the materials work together as they layer them and they process them. So some teeth, after you process them, if you microscopically look at them, they have some craze lines already beginning due to the process um, that they that individual manufacturer might use. Vita teeth, on the other hand, we control the process and we ensure that as they're processed, the material is processed and it hardens. It's under pressure and under constant uh, heat um, so that it's uniform. It, you know, not, not that it melts together, but it forms together layer upon layer in its final um, polymerization. It extrudes out any of the um, um, monomer material. So it's basically monomer free, uh, but it really does not have any craze lines at the end of its uh, life cycle of manufacturing. It's a very nice, dense, homogenous material. And because it's a homogenous material, because it grinds so nicely if you have to, it's ideal for implant cases. So the strength, the, the durability of the premium denture tooth lines of Vita, they're excellent for implant cases. Uh, no doubt, you know, should, should have the confidence to be able to use them in just about every implant type case, whether it's removable denture 
or a fixed denture as well. But they're very nice uh, denture teeth. Again, there are three layers. All of our teeth, be the teeth, are consists of uh, three layers. They all have different um, translucency or opacity. And then we have some enamel effects, if you will. But the primary is uh, enamel, dentin, and then a neck material. Again, it's all one material. It's produced in one lump sum. So it's gradually semi-cured, say, let's say the, the neck and the dentin, and it's semi-cured, and then they add the enamel, and then they cure all of it, finalize the, the polymerization of this material all at once at the end of the cycle. So you have a nice uniform material so that when you mill it, when you grind it, when you have to adjust it, the shade consistency stays throughout the entire tooth. So the shade is one of the things that Vita has always strived to incorporate into all of their materials to meet those gold standards of what they consider an A1 or a 1M1 if it's a 3D master and so forth. So that's very important uh, for Vita. It's important for us as technicians, denturists, dentists, so that if we do any adjustment, we still see the true shade. So again, the shade from the outer side all the way to the inside, the middle, if you will, that shade is consistent and it doesn't lose the chromacity that it requires. And if you look at, for instance, the just documentation, where that we as um, uh, humans, if you will, uh, we can visualize and see the difference between two colors or two different shades. Um, it, it's called a acceptability and perceptibility threshold. But we can see that at what we, this is, um, you know, it's the difference between one color point to another color point. That difference, what we visually see, uh, we can tell the difference between those at what we call 1.7 delta. And then we accept the difference of two different colors that says, hey, I picked A2 all the time. A2 works for you, Mrs. Jones. Well, that acceptability to match Mrs. Jones, what she, really she wants, that's about 2.7. So you can see here on this graph that the MFTs uh, are just above the, percept the perceptibility threshold, but they're well underneath the acceptable threshold. And then Fizzydans is XL and Vitapan Plus and Vitapan. Those are all under, under within the uh, threshold of telling the difference between one color and a different color, a split between the population. So 50% of us can tell the difference between, um, let's say, A3, the shade tab, and A3, the denture tooth, and then 50% can tell a little bit of difference. So again, Vita strives to make these shades consistent, but you also have to look at the translucency and the opacity. This diagram just shows you, graph just shows you a little bit of difference between grinding the teeth, how they look like, you know, how that shade is consistent throughout, no matter how you core out the denture teeth from Vita. Uh, but they're also homogenous, right? That shade is throughout. So on the Vita side, the Vita denture teeth, those are made so that you can polish them nice. You can grind into them. Um, you know, they're very durable. Um, fine grain, if you will, uh, acrylic um, MRP material. They're, they're homogenous, it's made out of one material. It is not made like an M&M &M, in which you have an outer shell and then an inside which have two different materials. And once you break through that shell, uh, that facial shell, then you end up with a, a different type of material and that can cause um, cleavage, if you will, of the facial aspect of some denture teeth, increase uh, chipping and wear and so forth. So that's important for Vita denture teeth. This is uh, true for our premium and our MFT materials. So we all talked a little bit about the fluorescence, but again, we always try to benchmark all of our materials against a natural tooth. We need to add fluorescence to them. All of our denture teeth, whether it's economy or premium, 
again, we, we take great strides in trying to make them uh, mimic a natural tooth. And you can see here that the, um, you know, the fluorescence of the denture teeth are excellent for Vita. So no matter what light uh, the patient may be in, they're going to reflect and show like natural dentition. So let's talk about a little bit about translucency and opacity. So again, we take it for granted of using the same denture teeth every time. And we don't look at, well, what is best for that patient? And, you know, I think just like crown and bridge and, you know, whether it's a PFM and all ceramic restoration, there should be some um, thought, some treatment planning around which tooth do you use. So if you're going to use a tooth that's maybe covered, uh, covering a framework for a fixed dentition, you won't need to have a denture tooth that's a little bit more opacious. But if you're looking for a removable denture or a fixed uh, um, uh, removable uh, implant supported denture, then you might want to use something that's got a little bit more translucent. So you still have the vitality, the, the translucency of a younger tooth look and use that for those types of cases. So you have to look at, again, indication, what are the, what are the translucency, the opacity levels of each tooth line, which one is uh, more opacified uh, than others. Um, so these are choices that you can uh, decide on on the treatment plan for the case, the specific case indications. So again, Vitapan, which is very chromatic, very opacious, kind of an aged, denture look versus something like a Vita Pan Plus, which is very useful, very uh, translucent. An Excel, which is right, you know, a little bit more translucent than the Physiodens, looks more natural, if you will. Uh, that can be used That's the opacity is just enough to use Excel on fixed over frameworks or not. So... We can look at the denture teeth uh, for translucency. The indications here, you can see the anteriors are layered differently than the posteriors. And we do that on a purpose. So even though these say A3, they are A3. But on a posterior tooth, you need more light. There, it's so dark in the back of the mouth that you need more light transmission to go through it to make them look better. On the anterior, right, it's more of a layered from the neck to the incisal layering. So you've got a little bit more um, vertical translucency layer, okay, to help that light dynamics. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what I'm um, talking about a little bit more. Uh, let me look on, here we go. So if you look at these denture teeth, uh, I'm gonna go over a couple couple concepts here with our denture teeth. So you've got these various denture teeth that are that Vita has. And you can kind of see here that these are fizzy dens, these are the Excel, the Vita Pan, and then MFT here. Right? So these fizzy dens are very natural looking. They've got um, a little bit more bulkier, but they're really to recreate a, um, a person that's uh, looking to have their, their natural teeth back that they wanted, that they had maybe back when they were uh, 20 or so. So a little bit more thicker on the basal, all right? But they also have a nice translucency, as you can see here. And then you can also see that these are kind of textured. Right, you see that those texturing here, a very nice texture to give a patient a little bit more youthful look. All right, and then you've got also on all of our teeth, this central, for instance, may have a little bit a different design than the adjacent one. The laterals are a little bit different. This one you can see is a little bit more pointier here at the mesial line angle, all right? So these teeth are very asymmetrical. 
they're designed this way. So if you're looking for a cookie cutter, uh, just basic chiclet type denture teeth, you're not going to get that with the Vita denture teeth. Uh, but these have a nice texture form, uh, great for implants, great for over dentures, great for um, any removable denture you want. Nice anatomy, nice design. You've got the Excel, which are a little bit different textured. I want to call this a little bit more of a stippling texture. So these, you know, you can start to choose. Once you start looking at your teeth and the, the what is available, you can start working with your your customers to decide on what kind of texture you're looking for. All right. So these are broader at the the necks. They have those long contacts, uh, a little bit more oval contacts, so that they have um, a little bit more um, uh, connection, less gingiva. Um, interproximal area where it's going to be too gummy. Again, everything is asymmetrical. The shades are very consistent. Okay. And then you look at maybe the patient loves their denture, their existing denture, and maybe they want to have more of an aged denture tooth look. If that's the case, then this might be the, 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 the right um, tooth for that specific patient. But this is something that you've got to work out with the dentist, the communication, or with the patient. Notice how this is all flat. It's polished, right? So there's a little bit more light reflection. So these are going to look more opacious. They're going to have more reflective. People will know that these are denture teeth. They're beautiful denture teeth. They're the most, actually the most popular tooth that we have. But again, you know, are we replacing the denture tooth, the existing denture, and the patient really wants that replacement? Or is it possible that we can move the patient to a little bit more of a youthful look that has a little bit more vitality to it, has a little bit more translucency to it, has a little bit more uh, anatomy to it, okay, and won't look as flat and polished. Now, the multifunctional tooth, the anterior is at well. Again, we designed these so they're basically premium teeth, but built, you know, just pure PMMA. But look at these. These are nicely textured, moderately textured. They have a nice and sizable edges. They look like natural teeth. On our Vionic DD frames, these are the anteriors. This is a, a T46. Uh, these are based on the Excel. But these are basically these teeth here. Okay, T46, T46, but they're embedded in a wax so that when they're milled, they only mill the basal side of these. They leave the incisals alone. So the mill will actually mill these to fit the frame, fit that printed uh, or digitally milled uh, denture base. You have the Vigo. All right, so the Vigo teeth are come pre-packaged and they come already ready to assemble, if you will. Uh, they are nice teeth. These are the, the most recent teeth that we have developed, the Vigo, Vionic Vigo. These are T46. Again, they're basically based off the Excel. But they are already abraded. They have a, a sandblasted area already uh, on this. So you don't have to worry about preparing this denture tooth, this Vigo denture tooth. And then let the design software create that socket. So it then gets adhesively bonded using that bionic bond into those sockets. So you can see here a very nice texture as well. The design, you know, we spend a lot of time creating mammalons. We create the contours that are natural. All right, we create that translucency as well. So these are a, a nice tooth that looks like a ceramic tooth. And that's the ideal for premium denture teeth. If you can't tell the difference between a ceramic tooth, a denture tooth, and a natural tooth, uh, we know what we're doing. 
and you can be um, confident that those are going to be used uh, for patients that are looking for long-term permanent denture teeth. On posteriors, we kind of have the same thing. It's the same material. The MFTs are made out of the pure PMMA, but we have Vividens, we have Vita Pan, uh, Cuspy form, we have Lingo form, and then we have the Cinoform options. These cuspal inclinations for Physiodens, if you look at these, these angles, right here, the, your, your cusp angle, okay? Those are from, starting from the first buy, they start at 33 degrees. And then they slowly, like natural teeth, they slowly shallow out um, to 28. So from 33, shallowing out to 28 degree angle inclination. Very natural posterior looking tooth. You've got the cuspy forms, a little bit more shallower as far as the, the width goes, okay? A little bit shallower, has very nice anatomy. These, same thing, they start from uh, 20, uh, 28 degrees and shallow down to the 23 degrees. So just like natural teeth, you, you use the incisive edges, the cusp by cuspids, they're, they're still slicing and dicing the food, and then your posteriors are uh, compressing it, uh, mortar and pestle type, and they are uh, a little bit more shallower to have that food move back into the patient's mouth. And then you got this nice uh, doable um, called a lingual form, which is basically, um, it is 15 degrees on your buccal cusps and 20 degrees on your lingual, okay? So these can be used in either a uh, lingual for, lingualized occlusion or a uh, functional tooth, uh, normal class one um, uh, tooth design setup. So these are very nice teeth. Again, um, these are uh, all 1520. They're about the same degree from the first bicuspid to the uh, second bicuspid. The thing about the denture teeth for Vita is that when they have these setups, you can notice here there's a little space here. That little space there. That is what we call a uh, freedom of movement or easy centric uh, concept. So we make it so that the patient, as they chew, they can slightly move about a millimeter. If you grind your teeth together, we all know that if we put our teeth together and kind of slide back and forth, our natural teeth allow movement. That's how these are designed and uh, formed on the posterior teeth to allow that little bit of movement so you don't have a locking in of that, those teeth and the, and the patient feels like they're sticking all the time. And if they stick, they lock in as they separate, as the jaws separate, the dentures are more easily flipped. So this kind of design will help um, the ability to have the patient chew more efficiently and will allow the patient so that they feel more comfortable, a little bit less soreness because there are no pinch points, there's no locking of those uh, upper and lower denture teeth, posterior teeth. Uh, and then you have, of course, uh, the cineform, which are very flat teeth. They only have a five degree in the central groove. All these cusps are very flat on the top here, okay? And then you just have the central groove. Uh, it's like a five degree uh, tooth, if you will. Uh, this is kind of just a, uh, these are the um, MFTs here. On this side here of this denture tooth, this is what the MFTs look like, posteriors. And then if you compare them to some other uh, denture teeth, which are very flat, even though they're 15, 20 degree angles, the incline planes, uh, 
um, they're, they're very flat. They're not as natural. They're not as efficient compared to something like a uh, MFT lingual form posterior or the lingual form or the physia dens and so forth. So very nice teeth. Um, the Bigo, again, natural dentition. Meant for digital dentures, designed with that nice texture. And of course, these are the anteriors are, base, are based on Excel and then the posteriors are based on lingual form. So very nice tooth also as well if you're getting into the digital dentures. Uh, and then of course these are the carded teeth for the uh, milling. And again, uh, these typically are milled only on the basal side, leaving the anatomy perfect as a, a carded tooth is. This is the MRP, strong material, durable material for long-term um, use for fixed dentures as well. But as I mentioned earlier, Amon Gerbach and probably others now, but now they have a, um, a design, a denture design software now that you can do just an upper or just a lower in which it will mill, spot mill, if you will, certain areas, especially if it's going to be against a natural um, dentition. And then something else uh, kind of talk about is that normally we, what, we we take shades using, um, you know, maybe a, a, a shade guide, right? And usually it's a classical shade guide, something like that. And then they look at all the shades and they try to determine, hey, what shade is that patient? Well, we know that many dentists, over 50%, we have remakes due to inaccurate shade taking. They're either brighter or, or, or darker than what they should be. So some offices have a hard time even selecting shade for crown and bridge, let alone denture teeth, because they still use these for denture teeth. I would propose that maybe a different method would for your dentist to actually set up a couple cards of teeth. You can get this to them, right? You can send, hey doctor, instead of using some oddball shades, especially for a new denture, especially if you're gonna start talking to that patient and saying, hey, I wanna create you a denture that makes you look a little bit more useful. I'm not talking about making you 30 years old. I'm talking about, you know, making you 50, 60 years old possibly. Well, when it comes to shade, and this could be true with the molds as well, if the doctor limits some of the shades and says, hey, Mrs. Jones, we have some brighter, we have middle, and then we have some dark, dark gray shades. Let me show you these and you know what range are you kind of looking at? And that way you're gonna consistently have lower inventory. You're gonna go through as many cards of teeth, but you'll be able to plan better for those uh, denture cases if these are limited to certain shades that you wanna control. So work with your dentist, work with your patients, and stop using a crown and bridge shade guide necessarily. Or if you do, you should limit have them limit the types of shades they are using. Again, there's 16 choices plus bleach, but most dentists only use three or five shades at all. So just pull out everything but those shades that they normally would use for the uh, denture. They could also use another shade guide, something like this. A, this is a uh, linear guide and it already, as this is, it's already controlled from a brightness all the way to a darker shade. So it is possible that your doctor every time would select one of these shades and then you could use that. So that limits your inventory to six types of shades, all right, that you have to control. But it's just working with that dentist, working with that patient. We're actually starting to see more and more, which is uh, um, understandable, but it's kind of, uh, um, Strange, we're getting more and more calls here of dentists and uh, technicians and denturists 
talking about, oh, well, I took a shade for my denture tooth and it's a 0.5 M1. Well, we don't make denture teeth like that. This, this device actually is for bleaching. So if you get a shade in on a prescription that's an in-between shade, for instance, like 2.5 M2, they're using this bleach guide. And again, that's another reason why you should have them control their shade taking using uh, the actual cards of teeth in, in a light, medium, and dark, or use something like this that's already controllable from light to dark. Uh, we also have, um, let's say that that texture, that texture is, is too much. So we have a, a denture here that, let's say that the, you selected the Excel, and the Excel teeth were a little bit more texture than needed. And you can watch a video on this. Uh, Paul, my colleague, uh, did a nice video showing you how to do this. Just a couple seconds, you can move these textured teeth, right, to a nice polish. We all know that. We stay away from polishing denture teeth, don't we? We, we get in trouble when we accidentally go and polish these teeth. But there are sometimes some patients, even though you may take a risk and say, hey, doctor, I'm going to get you a, a nice, useful um, tooth look for your patient. And they may say, hey, it's a little bit more texture. It looks a little too useful. Well, again, just go ahead and polish these off. These are nicely polished. This is just pumice, uh, standard polishing procedure. So you can take care of that as well. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, my PowerPoint here. And we will get this done. So we talked about layering. We talked about um, where that you have different teeth that different have different opacities, uh, translucencies. You're going to take use that as an advantage if you're doing like fixed denture work that you need to mask something out with. You need a tooth that has a high enough opacity to mask out that metal. So again, this is where you start choosing the tooth that matches the patient's um, requirements, the patient's indications, uh, the patient's expectations. You're going to do all this work, and if you have too uh, translucent of a denture tooth, these metal, the framework behind it, is going to shine through. So you got to avoid that. Otherwise, you're ending up doing a lot of additional opaquing uh, on the frameworks and so forth. And then, of course, we always uh, continue to do the uh, standard uh, model analysis, look at the facial features to try to control, try to find out, again, what mold. But again, if you were to look at all of the prescriptions you ever received, you'll start noticing a trend from office to office, or even yourself, if you're a denturist, you're selecting teeth, uh, and, and you're fudging a little bit on, on the standard, what we you know, you used to call the average selection of molds. Uh, we're kind of fudging a little bit, and, and you'll find that they're condensed. You're, you're there's a very few select uh, molds that we use. There's a very few select shades that we use. So just start looking at that so that you capitalize on what you know from each individual dentist. Have them start taking shades that you want them to take. Because after all, unless they absolutely have to replace a denture, a pre-existing denture that looks like an old age denture, we're starting new. Or unless they are taking a shade, which then goes back to crown and bridge shade selection. And, and again, many dentists get that wrong as far as shade goes. Uh, we all do because we all visually see something different. For a partial denture, then we start using crown bridge technique for shade taking. That we can't do anything about. That should be the shade that's going to blend in. But as far as full dentures, whether it's new ones, fixed ones, um, permanent or, or provisional dentures, we can start looking at the patient and deciding, again, the individual mold as well as the shade, as looking at the texture as well. How do they want to look? How do they want to feel? What kind of smile is that patient really looking forward to? Because again, just like Crown and Bridge, it's about blending in, creating dentures 
that fit that area. So this just gives you an idea that A3, A2 is the most popular shade. So this is uh, presented by Dr. Mike Detola at one of the, the um, denture symposiums a couple of years back you know, from Glidewells, where they kind of did a uh, total of how many prescriptions they, they received. And the majority of them were all A2, 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 A2. Well, again, you want to look at denture teeth, the shades of denture teeth. You want to, again, assess your environment when you're taking the shade. What is it really you're trying to recreate? Under what lighting conditions? You want to stabilize that, even for dentures, because the patient, again, the patient's expectations are that they blend in, they look like that patient wants to look like. So uh, again, taking shade from maybe 16 different shade tabs and hardly ever using any of those shades, uh, maybe that's not necessarily the way to go. Have them start using those shade molds. And Vita's kind of done something different. We've got two different shade systems. We got 3D Master, and then we got Classical. We knew that there were some weaknesses within the Classical. They don't cover the full range of natural dentition. So what Vita actually did is create on their 3D Master shades, they, if there is a close proximity of a classic shade, they actually print that onto the shade um, card so that you can understand 2M2 and A2 are close, they're approximate. The 2M2 is the dead on match to a 2M2, but so many of your our customers are used to the classic shade system. Well, a 2M2 is essentially an A2 or vice versa, if you will. So that helps you utilize more and more of the shades and for us, it or shade system, whether it's cla between classic and 3D master, kind of fits the range of all of the other uh, shades that are offered by all the other uh, denture tooth manufacturers. And then of course, don't forget that we can always step up our game by doing some cosmetic on the denture, uh, denture tooth. We can add some stains. We can add some gingiva. Um, we can we can add some all sorts of different. Uh, characteristics if we want if you want to step up the game but we use uh, in our system we use what's called VMLC and the paint kits that are stains to make them look really nice we kind of went over the opacity again even denture teeth again have different opacity translucencies at, at different thicknesses looking at each other and if you look at more textured on, on the go, kind of go back, the Excel is probably a little bit more textured than the Vita Pan Plus, and then the v, uh, Physio Dens, and then that aged smooth look. So just like Crown and Bridge, we can manipulate the look of those denture teeth by selecting uh, the opacity, the translucency, and also the texture that already comes with that uh, denture tooth. So if we have to select a um, a tooth that fits natural dentition or other dental work that was done, that's when you really have to capitalize on this uh, type of um, a concept here, whether to go a little bit more textured, a little bit more glassy or glossy, if you will. These are the uh, premium teeth and the MFT tooth, the economy tooth. Just a reminder of those, uh, what we have for Vita. Uh, these are all excellent teeth whether it's an economy tooth that you're going to use for an interim denture or economic denture, if you will, or the premium teeth for fixed uh, implant denture work, long-term um, long dentures for success. Again, our denture teeth are set up so that they have more of a natural tooth uh, inclination, the cuspal inclination a little bit different from first by all the way to second uh, second molar. Um, it, it makes it just makes it natural, it makes it so that the patient can chew. Everything flows again from the front to the back as in a natural, uh, natural teeth do. So that's really nice. 
Uh, as far as the de individual denture teeth, posteriors and anteriors, we have them set up so they have nice um, uh, facets, if you will, that kind of interlock or help set the teeth. And if this works, I'll show you this uh, little program here. Uh, so this is a short video it's just showing you how that the, the teeth, the posteriors of a Vita tooth, how well it will set up for you to make it a little bit more easier and friendlier. So it, it's got those uh, facets, occlusal facets, contact facets, so they really fit together in the proper place every time you set up. So it makes it much easier to produce. So everyone knows how to set up teeth, but again, these teeth are designed so they slide in into the perfect position, or you can individualize them, of course, like in any other denture tooth, individualize them and align them to the proper occlusion that you're looking for. I kind of went over the, um, the little easy centric concept that these spots, you know, the, the cusps do not lock into the central fossas uh, and, and therefore cause the patient kind of sticking when they try to separate. Uh, it allows a little bit of movement, which then allows the patient to feel more natural and they don't have any pain points or as many pain points on that ridge, if you will, as well. So very nice concept for the an from anteriors all the way to the posteriors, multiple of, of molds, obviously. Uh, there's, you know, like all denture companies, everyone's gone wild, you know, a different mold for individual patients, all by averaging, all by looking at the measurements of that individual patient. That's great. But again, those are the outliers for some of these denture molds. And I think you can... Again, look at all the prescriptions you've ever had in the past, and you can narrow down a nice selection of molds and help guide your patient or your dentist or your customer into certain shades, into certain molds. But as an individual, we've got plenty of molds to fit whatever that individual patient may require along with the different shades and so forth. The only shade that really Vita doesn't make is B1. Uh, and that's because we have a, usually have a 1M1 in the 3D Master, which is a, um, a B1 as well. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the uh, digital denture tooth. Uh, the offering there is such that we have um, a, a limited mold set, but they're the most popular that we've ever sold. Uh, this is going to probably grow as as more and more um, folks get into the digital denture uh, fabrication. Uh, but right now, the, these molds uh, seem to suffice. Um, but it, it's, it's nice to see that our market is now starting to move into of uh, 21st century technology. Um, there's like plenty of studies out there. There's like 253 different um, steps of processing errors that can happen in traditional. So if you look at this as, as an acceptance method of fabricating dentures, it's, it's a nice smooth transition if you're thinking about going into uh, digital dentures. Uh, if you know the Vita teeth, these teeth are embedded in, again, in that software where there's uh, an ExoCAD or a three-shape software, and we can provide you how to download those if you have the denture uh, modules as well. Again, this is our lineup. Uh, anywhere from premium, uh, aged denture look, I, I hate to say it, but that to me, that's what the Vita Pan is. However, I got to tell you, uh, more and more people use that Vita Pan. They love that flat, smooth texture. And I think that's just reminiscence of, of um, the patients, that their expectations, uh, they're satisfied with, with a, a denture-looking denture, -looking denture uh, tooth. So that's Vita Pan. It covers most patients. But if you're really trying to get the most out of uh, a denture tooth, right now I think the Vita Pan Excel anteriors and the lingual form posteriors are the way to go. 
And then, of course, we've got those um, economy teeth and prosthetic digital work as well. So one thing I know for sure is that the uh, removable denture, uh, that market, it is looking good. There are so many people that require uh, dentulous, um, you know, uh, prosthetics. And, um, you know, you're, you, we're never going to be out of business if we continue to um, fabricate dentures, whether it's traditional and or uh, digital. Um, we're going to be we're going to be fine here with with uh, work uh, for many many years to come. So if you do have any questions, you know you want to start uh, sending them in through um, now, and I will uh, get to those uh, questions. Um, so uh, we got a question for is it pay if what if a patient wants Hollywood toilet bowl teeth? Uh, that would be our zero. We have a bleach, bleach teeth. Uh, they come in a zero M1, a zero M3. Um, Vita doesn't make a toilet bowl white, a paper white, but that's only because they don't think that's a natural white. I mean, um, patients, you know, to us, to laymen who are not in the dental world, uh, and want to have that Hollywood smile, that Hollywood white, um, you know, there are some out there, but we have a translucency, a little bit of a translucency to our denture tooth that uh, keeps it from looking a pure white. Uh, so we do have it, um, you know, it's called the bleach 0M1, uh, 0M3. Uh, we've got more and more coming down the p uh, pike as far as um, the pipeline, as far as additional uh, shades in the future, that's always a possibility. So we're always uh, forming those. Another question here is, um, did you say the Excel were made for a younger look? The Excel are made for all looks, but because of the translucency, because of the texture, if you look at Crown and Bridge, if you relate this to Crown and Bridge, we do a couple things to make them look youthful though for those people to blend into those individuals that are doing crown and bridge that are individual teeth we texture them because younger you have more texture as you get older or age aged out you start to have more of your enamel look more of that gray translucent very glossy look so the excel have a moderate uh texture and a moderate translucency and it's good for Anybody who wants to have a denture tooth that looks natural, looks like ceramics. So uh, let's see here. Uh, what if the, okay, you got that one. Um, sorry, just looking through these. Uh, we used Vita Pan and Vita Physiodens at one time but the anterior kept snapping off mid tooth on mold uh old dentures why was this an issue so this is a good question because it comes down to and i hate to say it aaron is that there is any tooth on the market will fracture depending on the patient uh many patients actually fracture their natural teeth and any patient that fractures their natural teeth can also fracture their uh, denture tooth. Those of us that have been in the, in the business for a long time, and, and Aaron, you probably have as well, is that it all comes down to how we set those teeth up. If they were snapping for an individual patient, then that occlusion is probably off and that you have interference, right? So you have that patient coming in, especially if it's anterior, the patients are extruding, right? Well, as they're talking, they're coming across the face and they are bumping up to each other. And patients with enough force, especially on implants, those edges can snap. You know, they're not made out of steel, they're made out of a ceramic polymer, if you will, uh, to make it look like a natural tooth. Uh, if the 
occlusal table, if the, the right uh, adjustments are made, there's no interference, you have that group function, you should not see any denture tooth snapping off, breaking off, cracking, crazing. That is always a sign of something going on with the patient's bite. Maybe, maybe we need to open it. You know, maybe the bite, the occlusal of EDO is not correct, um, but there sounds like a lot of interference as the patient speaks and that's got to be adjusted, it, it, no matter what tooth line it is. Uh, so are the MFT uh, staining, and if yes, in what condition are the MFT staining? So if you're talking about, uh, Angela, if you're talking about the MFTs, if they stain or absorb stains, uh, the answer is no. Um, we've got, I, I can send you some documentation uh, we've done like wine studies and, and, and different liquids, fluids, and the idea is that the way that we process all of our denture teeth, because they're very uh, homogenous, one material, uh, there's really no pores for liquids to infuse in there. So you may get a surface stain because wine or other materials may attach itself to the surface, but it won't penetrate into the tooth, and therefore the patient can remove that color, remove that stain by typical uh, cleansing, uh, which is what they should do periodically. I hope that answers uh, that question. Uh, we have another question. Um, so uh, back to uh, crazing, fracturing. So I'm, I sit here at the help desk uh, my colleague and myself, and for years now, uh, I have had calls about uh, various denture teeth, competitive denture teeth, and the reason why they moved to Vita was because they are they don't fracture. Again, fracturing of denture teeth is the causation of the wrong setup, the wrong occlusal adjustment, someone in the design within the uh, process, we have to go back and say, hey, why is this individual tooth fracturing? And it fractures for a reason. The feet of teeth that we fabricate, we've had them out for you know, decades. And we do not get calls about um, fractures. It, it just uh, it doesn't even it it it's one in uh, whatever, right? One maybe out of a hundred, and it's always an individual tooth, an individual maybe a lateral, usually a lateral, right? Lower could be an upper, but usually it's a lower, and it's just that one tooth. So if the patient, if everything's equal. Why does an individual tooth fracture and not all anteriors? The reason is because there's interference, there needs to be an adjustment. Maybe the denture is not fitting correctly. Uh, maybe it's moving on them. Maybe the, the patient's undiagnosed parafunctional habits and so forth. So um, we've really got to take care of a lot of the, the um, uh, issues uh, beforehand and fix it as we set up those teeth. We do our part Taking what we can, we get from the dentist. If, if unless you're a denturist, then you've got total control. But as a technician, we take all the uh, available information. Uh, hope that the uh, uh, digital scan and or the impression are are accurate. That the bite is accurate, uh, and that the um, the person who's going to uh, check uh, the patient's uh, occlusal scheme and uh, contact points uh, interorally are doing their job to make sure that they equilibrate and that they, we don't have any interference on any individual tooth. Um, so, you know, we get, we get uh, often we get calls about, uh, hey, I had this fracture, I had that fracture, and get to talk to them. And usually it's, it's not just ours, it's other teeth as well. Uh, it's very patient specific. Um, so if anybody else has any more questions, please feel uh, free to, to get a hold of us.
Uh, we do have uh, CE coming if you need it. Uh, our CE is uh, going to be an email to you uh, and then just respond to that. And then also this will be recorded. We'll post it. Give us a couple of days. We'll post this webinar onto the website, onto our uh, social medias, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, uh, Vita North America, YouTube, and so forth. Uh, this is um, going to give you an idea of um, of where they're located at, all the videos, all the webinars that we do. We have a lot posted. If you want to get a hold of Paul or myself, we work here uh, every day, um, more than eight hours usually. So give us a call. We're here early. We're here later. Um, you, or you can just email us. It's a simple email, help at vitanorthamerica.com. That's uh, all there is to it, email us. We'll, we'll uh, try to help you out, try to work through anything you have, any questions, any comments. We would like you, if you're interested, to get a hold of any of our uh, local reps or your local rep. So depending on if you're in the United States or in Canada, um, you know this is a, uh, a slide that shows all of the uh, contacts. Uh, just find your, um, your local uh, rep on this contact list if if you didn't capture it again contact Paul or myself at help at vita north com, and we will get the uh, local your local rep sales rep vita sales rep in touch with you so that they can work out anything um, of your uh, questions or comments or or work on anything that we can do for you uh, to make your life better to make your business grow uh, or to also help you um, grow with your technical skills. We offer a, a lot of different uh, programs. We've got, just got through doing a, uh, with uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Wagenseal as a denturist. We just did a, um, a, a class two denture setup uh, with him. We've got all these others that are also in um, the works. So we've got a class three. We've got a combination uh, where we have an upper denture against the lower uh, natural tooth. Uh, we have that coming up. We have uh, various workshops. We have uh, Paul is going to do uh, another um, program on May 4th, which is the uh, integration of the workflow for digital dentures. Uh, that is actually a, um, a hybrid. It's a hands-on. So we actually send you, if you register, uh, it's got a minimal uh, payment to it, but if you register it to it, uh, we send you actually a printed denture. We say, send you a set of uh, Vigo denture teeth and the Vionic bond. We actually have you go through the process uh, virtually of that hands-on process, a workflow of our digital denture teeth, Vionic. Uh, you can get the, the whole list of uh, all of our courses at um, www.vitanorthamerica.com slash courses. So please join us for another future one. Uh, we have uh, done the questions. Um, so I'm just going to go back and I'm going to double check, make sure I covered everyone's questions, make sure there's no outstanding uh, questions there. Let's see here. Let me do a real quick check. Um, any courses this year? So uh, hands-on courses. Hey, Dan, um, so we plan on doing hands-on, hopefully closer to probably the third quarter. So the end of summer, uh, possibly fall, we may get some hands-on courses going back by then. We're in California, even here, we have a little bit of a, uh, uh, slow push as far as getting everyone back um, out in the world. Uh, so as soon as we feel it's comfortable in the individual states, uh, whatever their guidance, uh, guidance, their rules are, we will uh, go ahead and have some hands-on courses uh, as soon as we can. Otherwise, right now, there's a lot we're doing over virtual, over the internet, remotely, if you will, and so forth. So, um, all right. So I am going to uh, close this out. Uh, thank you, Angela. I appreciate that. Uh, William and everybody else that's uh, uh, 
adding in, you know, thank you and, and, and saying, uh, uh, you know, that they're going to at least try RV to teeth. Uh, that's the whole intent is try something new, try different methods, learn, grow in our business. Uh, the future is ours, right? As, as far as dental technicians, dentures, even dentists, look, we have to find new methods, new ways to uh, individualize ourselves, make us stand out, uh, make our work stand out, make ourselves profitable, make ourselves as equipped uh, as need be to um, be able to meet the challenges of the future, whether it's traditional or digital, especially in the removals area uh, and fixed denture area. Uh, they need us. They need our technical knowledge and know-how. Uh, it's going to be very successful for all of us as uh, the uh, days go by and the, and the years go by. So uh, good luck to everyone. I hope everyone's safe, stays safe. Uh, we'll hope to see you at another Vita Learning webinar. At this time, this will uh, conclude today's uh, Vita webinar. Thank you for joining everyone.